everyone, and thanks for joining us this afternoon. My name is Katie Hansen, and I am the Associate Curator of European Paintings at the Museum of Fine Arts, Boston. Today, we are excited to share with you a special performance by violinist Lilith Hertunian as part of the virtual launch of the exhibition, Monet in Boston, Lasting Impression. The exhibition highlights the city's and the museum's enduring commitment to the artist's work by bringing together all 35 of our Monet paintings for the first time in a generation in honor of the MFA's 150th anniversary. As you know, the museum is currently closed. So while you wait to see these masterpieces in person, we've launched the exhibition virtually, and I encourage you to visit MFA.org and the MFA's social media channels to explore some of this virtual content. As the curator of the exhibition, I'm especially excited about today's virtual concert featuring a Boston musician performing works composed during Monet's lifetime. It honors Monet's perception of himself as an artist deeply immersed in the cultural milieu of his time, as well as his keen sensibility toward the resonances between painting and music. In a 1909 interview, he had this to say about the matter, and I quote, but how much wiser would it be not to cut myself off from my own period, a period to which I belong with every fiber of my being? It would be more accurate to describe me as a contemporary of Stefan Mallarmé and Claude Debussy. I agree with them and with Baudelaire that all the arts have points in common, that there are harmonies and concerts of color that are self-sufficient and that affect us just as a musical phrase or a chord can strike us deeply without reference to a precise and clearly stated theory. I love this quotation, not only because Monet names one of the composers whose work you'll see here soon, but also because Monet provides in it such a generous invitation to feel, to be open to being moved by sound, by color, by great art of all sorts. And so, with Monet's words in mind, it is my great pleasure to introduce Boston-based violinist Lilith Hartunian. Lilith is a favorite at the MFA where she performed her project Vellum Sound, which, per which paired musical selections uh, with artworks from the museum's collection. We are thrilled to welcome Lilith back to the museum, albeit virtually this time, for today's online rendition of the Nancy Lee Clark Soundbite Concert Series. And now, without further ado, here's Lilith. Hey everybody, my name is Lilith Hartunian and I'm really excited to be with you this afternoon to help celebrate the digital launch of Monet and Boston Lasting Impressions. I've picked three of my favorite paintings from this collection and paired them with three of my personal performances of works that were written by composers who were alive during Monet's lifetime. Ready? Let's jump in. The first painting I want to show you is entitled Rue de Bavot en Fleur, and it was painted in 1864 when Monet was just in his 20s. There's actually a lot of sharpness and directness to what you're seeing on view right now. There's high color contrast and a fairly straightforward subject matter. This directness and sharpness really made me think of the first Caprice by composer Sophie Carmen Eckhart Gramate. She was a virtuoso violinist, pianist, and composer who wrote over 175 works in her lifetime and was a fierce proponent and advocate for contemporary music. This first Caprice is entitled The Sick and the Clock and it's about her experience at the bedside of a dear friend while time mercilessly ticks on. It has, again, that same intensity, directness, and sharpness from a young artist who was trying to convey something powerful. This is Sophie Carmen Eckhart Gramate's The Sick and the Clock.
For those of you that are just joining us, I'm violinist Lilith Hartunian, and I'm here with the MFA today to help celebrate the digital launch of Monet and Boston Lasting Impressions. After this performance, definitely go to mfa.org to check out the rest of the beautiful paintings that are on view to you now digitally. Do you remember the town we saw in the previous painting, Honfleur? That's the birthplace of our next composer, Eric Satie. He was definitely an eccentric and a rule breaker. He flunked out of school a number of times and didn't get his first composition diploma until he was in his 40s, which meant he gave himself a lot of artistic and personal freedom to compose in any way that he liked. One of the things that makes him really unique is his love and respect for musical harmonies without adhering to a strong musical structure or form. The piece I'm going to play for you is entitled No Cien No. 1. It's part of a collection of works originally written for solo piano that I've arranged for violin and toy piano that I'll be performing side by side on split screen just to make this experience a little bit more fun for all of us. The painting I want to show you now is entitled Grand Canal Venice. In the previous painting, we talked about how there was a fairly high amount of color contrast and stark brushwork. Now we've moved a number of decades forward in Monet's life, and you can see that his style has really evolved and come to its own. One thing that became extremely clear to Monet in the latter part of his life is his love and respect for nature and natural light, which is something he was always trying to capture in his works. Even though the subject matter of this painting is a Baroque church, our eye is actually much more drawn to the sunlight and how it casts a glow on the buildings and also on the water down below. There's a lot of flow and warmth and softness to this painting. And in the piece you're about to hear, which actually doesn't have any bar lines or time signature, there's also a lot of flow and softness. This piece sounds as if it's been going on for eternity, and we tune in just for a couple of moments to experience it before we leave and the piece goes on. This is Nocien Number no. 1 by Eric Satie.
was gonna save the best for last. The final painting I want to show you is called The Water Lily Pond. This is absolutely iconic Monet, and it was painted in Giverny, where he built his dream landscape. There's so much beautiful growth and wildlife and nature in this painting and that Japanese bridge. This painting is going to be paired with also an iconic piece from the classical repertoire. It's called Girl with the Flaxen Hair by Debussy. Even though Debussy himself resented being called an impressionist composer, he has very much contributed to the style that we attribute to impressionism. This piece is based on a poem with the same title, Girl with the Flaxen Hair, and it's all about that warmth and that glow and that beauty. In the painting that you're looking at now, again, even though the subject matter is that Japanese bridge and the greenery draping around it, what your eye is drawn to is that magical, warm, soft light. The harmonies that you'll hear in the Debussy I would say are so cushiony and warm and just as languid as what you're seeing in the painting. In the previous performance, I told you that I made an arrangement for two of me, and this time, why stop there? There will be four Liliths on screen, so this work again was originally written for solo piano, and there have been many fairly well-known transcriptions, one of which is for violin and piano, but this is my personal transcription of Girl with the Flaxen Hair for four violins. I hope you enjoy.
Thank you so much for tuning in. This has been a digital edition of the Nancy Lee Clark Soundbites concert series. It has been such a pleasure to perform for you today and to talk about these musical and artistic works that I love so much. Just a reminder that the paintings you saw today and more are available on view at mfa.org as part of the exhibit Monet and Boston Lasting Impressions. If you've enjoyed getting to know me, your host, head on over to my Instagram, at Lilith Hartunian. I'll be there after the show. I'd love to hear your thoughts or your reactions to what you heard and saw today or to answer any questions you might have or to start a dialogue. To all the mothers out there, I wanna wish you a happy Mother's Day, especially to my own mother who happens to be awesome. This year, Mother's Day is also my grandmother's birthday, so happy birthday, Grandma. To everyone out there, stay healthy, stay safe, and remember that art and music are available to all of us as a source of comfort, but also communication, connection, and inspiration. Take care. <laughs>